So Joe, about 18 months ago or so, you guys at Truex were acquired by Fox. Uh, you guys at, at Truex are a company working on digital technology, new ad formats. Talk about what you've been working on since becoming part of the Fox organization. Yeah, um, you know, it's uh, one thing that I think is kind of funny to talk about is that we're working on the exact same thing we were working on before. Um, you know, you can talk about the transition of us into Fox accelerating what our mission has been, which is to figure out what's the future of the television commercial, right? So, you know, television has been in transition for a long time, but the answer hasn't come yet in terms of what are we going to do to the current ad model that consumers are going to be excited about if if we can't get to uh, tolerate, uh, maybe that'll be a, a decent halfway point. But um, but when I say it's the exact same thing, I think that there is a fundamental uh, truth that is the single most valuable resource on planet Earth is human attention. Like you can do everything from shape elections to product categories to health of nations, like based on what people pay attention to. And the thing that I find fascinating about the media business overall, whether you're in the business of creating content for audiences or you're in the business of advertising, you're in the business of attention. And so when we uh, set out with Truex, it was to say, how could we respect the most valuable resource on planet Earth? How could we respect people's attention and create a better market for it? Um, and so when coming into Fox, the goal was, hey, we have a market that seems to be off kilter right now. Um, we have massive amounts of human attention. Um, but there are all these numbers and metrics out there. Facebook has 10 billion views, our neighbors over here. Uh, Snapchat has 30 billion views, you know, whatever the numbers are, but it doesn't seem to be matching up correctly with what we know people are spending time doing. Um, so I've spent a lot of time on that and the team, you know, at Truex has kind of continued to be focused on what will the commercial look like going forward. Yeah, interesting. So inherent in, in, in this focus on con consumer attention is something I know you care a lot about, talk a lot about, which is the idea of consumer choice. Right, which is more and more in um, new content distribution vehicles, whether you think about it as over the top or you think about it as uh, video on demand or streaming video on demand, uh, consumers are presented with the options of what type of ad formats and ad experiences to have. H how important is that idea and do you think that has a big impact on how we'll see this b business transition? You know, it, there's a difference between uh, pure choice and then participation. And I think uh, phase one is participation in advertising. So, um, you know, the interactivity in advertising has been around for a long time. You can click on a lot of banners, not that anyone does, but you could. Um, but the idea of participation in advertising can make it more immersive, and I think that's the first phase. The first phase is to say, we could lower the number of ads a person needs to see if we could get them to participate with said advertisement. We could move away from a frequency-based model of advertising. Um, and I think one of the great things about being at Cannes is this is a creativity festival. The thing I'm most excited about is the first television commercial was a print ad with a radio voiceover because that was what they knew how to make. It was Bulova and it was just a static image of the Bulova clock was ticking and it just said America runs on Bulova time. And we all know how the television commercial evolved over the years and a lot of it was celebrated here at Cannes. So if we say we're moving into a new phase of commercial that might be immersive, that doesn't require a 10 frequency, um, this is the place where we're going to start to look at what that, what that is. Do you have a sense for what that could mean? Like, how, how do you drive interactivity and engagement in the way you're talking about it in a linear type television experience? Well, I think that getting back to your first point about choice, like what we've seen a lot is that when you give a consumer choice, they begin to appreciate what's in front of them more. Um, so, you know, Hulu ad free. I, I, I talk about this all the time. There are a couple of things here that probably send shivers down the spine of everybody who's at Can, and that would be ad blockers, Netflix, and Hulu ad free, HBO. None of those have advertising in them, right? And this is what we're here to celebrate. Um, I think Hulu ad free is the best thing to happen to advertising in the past year because what it did is it started to create a new marketplace. It used to be Coke and Pepsi would, would barter and, and bid on, on buying people's attention and whoever paid the most got it. And now consumers are part of the equation. They say, hey, I, I'd like to pay more to have no ads. But why I think Hulu ad free, and this is something not a lot of people talk about, is even more interesting is of the people who did not select to be to go ad free, the people who say, okay, I see that there's an ad free option, but I'm still gonna take advertising, they were less annoyed by the ads because they knew what the trade was. They knew that there was a cost to it. And so that's something of the ethos in advertising that needs to be reset is what's the social contract between the consumer and the advertiser? What are they supposed to be paying for? Yeah. Y you mentioned as you were talking the, the topic of ad blocking. Um, 
so I'm interested in your perspective on it. Uh, there, I think there are differing views of whether the idea of ad blocking is just inherently evil uh, or a necessary evil that is helping the industry evolve. What's, what's your take? Uh, I would go with neither of those. I would say ad blocking is the best thing uh, to happen in advertising over the past decade. Um, I mean, you know, the again, getting back to consumer choice, because I, I, I put Hulu ad free in the same bucket as ad blocking, right? Because consumer has to take a choice in order to do ad blocking. Now, Hulu ad free, they pay for it. But I think with ad blocking, it emerged as a, it's like the immune system uh, kind of, putting antibodies for a virus. And the virus is what digital advertising has been for a while. Massive amounts of data being used, huge amounts of privacy violations, ads that no one sees, ads that are below the fold, ads that are like cheap impressions, what I refer to as subprime impressions. And we've created markets to trade billions of dollars worth of these subprime impressions. And I think uh, ad blocking is the antibodies, but it's also it's showing consumer desire to move to something better. So well, what? So okay. So I'll, I'll go with what probably most then would, would qualify that as more necessary evil, right? Because it's similar. There's clearly disruption that occurs as part of this transition, right? Which is in the in the point of getting to something that looks better, that is more in, engaged, more interactive. Um, you've got to take some of this noise out of the system, which is what you're driving at, right? Which is ad blocking is getting rid of the noise. But I'm not sure everyone knows what good looks like yet, or is ready to enact that. How do we get to the point where it's unnecessary that then the ad model that you I think that you're hoping for and that you see in the coming in the future is there? How, how close are we and what, what steps are happening to get closer to a world which you think is going to be consumer engagement and a content value exchange which has to be part of the equation? I don't think we're that close yet and I think the, the first thing we're going to have to do to get there is change the currency. So I'll list a couple of things right now. Um, half the ad for five seconds, half the ad for 10 seconds, the whole ad for 30 seconds, the whole ad on a quarter of the screen for 30 seconds, the whole ad on the whole screen for 30 seconds. Sound on or sound off. Everything I just listed counts as an impression, right? And so because of that, we have no commodity pricing. People complain about Nielsen and its accuracy with television all the time, but it was a commodity, right? So we could fight over price. You know, OMD and Fox could talk about upfronts and we could say, no, 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 we want this price, we want that price, but we only have so much inventory, fine. Move fast forward to a digital age and we say, oh, we want this price, great, I'll make you impressions at that price. How are you gonna do that? Don't worry about it, we're gonna just make them. Funny, uh, I don't know if you call it a funny story, but again, I'd say this is why the necessity of ad blocking is every Q4 there's more video ad impressions on the internet than any other quarter. I, I don't know how that happens. I don't know that I, I don't sit every Q4 and say I wanna watch more video ads. Uh, it, the internet will produce whatever is demanded of it. And we set uh, poor incentives. We said, you know, find lowest common denominator for impressions. Um, and the funny thing is watching it from the outside before coming into Fox was, well, look, this just makes sense. This is, this is what all the kids are doing these days. This is the rage. But you look at it and you say, you know, one of the reasons TV has had such a difficult time in the transition is they only had one thing. They had a corner to corner of a 50 inch screen that plays for the whole 30 seconds, and that was what was called an impression. If you held digital to the standard of, we want the entirety of the screen for the whole 30 seconds with a high likelihood of the sound on, there'd be no more inventory in digital. Like, does that, I mean, that blows my mind to think about, that there'd be no more inventory, and so we don't hold it to that standard. And so TV comes back and says, God, we did, you know, Empire didn't have 40 billion views yesterday, right. but uh, we know more people watched it, and uh, people spent more time with it. In talking, uh in preparing for this, we, you mentioned that the idea of place shifted advertising. I'd just love you to give a quick thought on what does that mean to you? I think that in, you know, there's, there's, nothing, there's nothing new under the sun. I think that all good advertising matches the medium that it's in. Radio is a linear audio, so we had linear audio inserts and born as the radio commercial and it scales. Uh, TV is a linear video medium. We have linear video inserts. It is the best format for it and uh, it scales. If we're moving to a VOD interactive world, like why can't we have on-demand advertising with interactivity? Why couldn't I engage with a Samsung uh, ad? Why couldn't I engage with a Pepsi ad? Go home and turn on Empire. I got two mentions in. I have to have at least three contractually in all my canned speaking engagements from Fox. So, um, But why couldn't I then go home and watch on VOD or on set-top box or on Hulu ad-free? Why does the ad have to be interruptive? And as a matter of fact, it's actually better for advertisers when it's not. You know, uh, one of the things that always gets me is there's, there's this 
I want to call it a myth or a, a self-delusion that if the ad is good enough, people will like it. Which is just if the ad is if the ad is truly art, people are going to love it. And I always like people to think about pick your favorite show in the world. Now decide whether or not you'd like it to be interrupted with even your favorite ads, or would you rather watch it uninterrupted? And there's only one time a year that people are anticipating commercials with Glee, and that's the Super Bowl. And it still is five million dollars a spot. Why? Because you know people are anticipating it with Glee. Could you get to a point where people are anticipating the ad because they're doing it on their own time and it's non-interruptive, that you actually get a better experience with consumers? You get more time to express whatever the creativity that comes out of the next phase of commercials is.